guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I wanted to do a video that's a little bit more off the cuff, and that is I wanted to talk about independent watchmakers. Now, in honor of this video, I'm actually wearing the Reverie Sea Spirit. This is a micro brand watch made by a small independent manufacturer, and they sent me this watch to review for you guys. So I'm wearing it for about a week, week and a half. I just got it today. And I'll shoot you guys a review with my uh, honest opinions after I've given it some wrist time. But that's right. I wanted to talk about independent watchmakers. Now, a lot of people consider companies like Breitling or Oris uh, to be independent watchmakers. And in a way, they are. They're not part of the conglomerates like Richemont, LVMH, Caring Group. Uh, you know, these big companies that own multiple watchmakers. However, for the sake of this discussion, I don't really want to mention companies like that, simply because while they are indeed independent, they're, they're big boys. You know, they're, they're big, big uh, companies with a lot of money behind them. I wanted to talk about what I consider to be the true independence. Companies like F.P. Jorn, Kerry Voodalainen, uh, Christian Vanderklaw, uh, Sarah Peniva, companies like this. And a lot of people consider these to be micro brands. But that's also a tough thing to judge because micro brands, in my mind at least, are much smaller companies. Uh, they make less expensive watches, something like Reverie here. So, what do I think of these independent small watchmakers? I love them. I actually think they're the future of the industry. You guys might have heard me say this a few times before, but F.P. Jorn, for example, is one of my favorite watchmakers of all time. Why is that? Well, it's because he does stuff that a lot of companies, uh, a lot of the bigger companies don't do. For example, a lot of his movements are made in solid gold, or he uses tantalum cases, and he makes some crazy complications. All these things which um, seem almost simple and, and like part of uh, Mr. Jorn's job actually come into effect because he's not part of a larger group. Uh, he has the opportunity to make his own decisions and, and take his own risks, such as making movements out of gold. Things that larger brands like Patek Philippe, Vacheron Constantin, or Piaget, Breguet, they can't do because they have a large amount of shareholders behind them and they have to think of them first and foremost. So I think that these independent watch manufacturers are leading the industry and the charge for innovation. And you know what? That's nothing but a good thing. Also, when one thinks of these independent manufacturers, you have to think, you know, what is luxury? Why are they so expensive? Would I own them? Now, to me, and I've said this before in previous videos, luxury isn't so much about the price point. It's more about the product. And I'd rather have something very rare and unique than something everybody else has. So wearing a Christian van der Klaue or F.P. Jorn, you know, companies that make less than a thousand pieces a year is very unique to me. Now, that's a place that I'd consider spending, you know, real money because I'm not getting something everybody else has. I've also had the opportunity, and I'll put up a picture right here, to play with a few watches by a company called Lange Heine. Now, this is the most exclusive brand I've ever seen in my life. They're a German maker, fully in-house. Their movements are made of gold. Their dials are made of porcelain. And get this, guys. They make 30 watches a year. 30 pieces a year. Mr. Lange, uh, I think his name is Daniel Lange, actually, knows all of his customers personally. Now, yes, these are very expensive pieces. I think his stainless steel pieces start at about 16, 17,000. However, when you're spending 35, 40, 50, even $100,000, this is a true exclusive product. It's not something off the mass market. You know, yes, it's not very recognizable, but I find there to be value in something like this. 
Anyway, guys, I know it's a shorter video today, but I just wanted to give you my view on independent watchmakers. I think they're great. I think once we cross a certain threshold of price, they're honestly the best way to go. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comment section below. And follow me on Instagram. I've actually been posting some independent watchmakers today, so you guys can take a look at the pictures. That's at Federico Talks Watches. Link in the description as well. Guys, thank you for sticking around for Federico Talks Watches, and don't forget to subscribe. I have a video coming out with TGV at the end of the week, and I'm sure you don't want to miss that. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.